Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my last cards for 2021. And that is shiny bows. These are stamps from Trinity Stamps. Been wanting to get to these for a while and finally did in my last YouTube video for the year. And the the coloring on these is going to be the same for both bows that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to color all the tiny ones. I decided it would be easier to see the bigger ones. And you would follow the same process for the little ones because they're basically just miniatures of the larger stamps anyway. So there's nothing new to see there. So I'll just do the two large ones. I'm starting off with an R14. And that's my base color for these, leaving a larger highlight than I know I need. The reason is because you can always close up a highlight, but you can't add to it. Well, you can add to it with a white pen, but when we're talking red bows, white pen doesn't get along with red bows very well. As you might know, it tends to soak up the color. And red is just one of those colors. If you use white pen over top of watercolor or Copic or colored pencil or anything, red just soaks in. That's just what it does. So instead, I'm going to make sure I leave a little bit of white on each one. I'm thinking of the light coming from the upper right hand side and I'm treating each of these triangles separately in my brain and saying, okay, if the light's coming from up there, where is it going to reflect on this? And I wish I had a scientific thing that I could say, make a triangle that looks like this, make a triangle that looks like that. Best bet would be, if you want to color these particular bows especially, is to screenshot some steps. And guess what? I already screenshotted them for you over on my blog. How lucky are you that you don't have to do that? So that at least you have a general guideline for how to do that. I've made this one of my tiny tutorials which have been very popular this year. That's been a nice thing that's happened in 2021. I decided to start doing carousel mini tutorials. I've shared a few of them here on YouTube and they get lots of love and attention. I think people like to have things in that kind of a format. And next up, after I got the, the base color down is to add the base color for the portions that are underneath all of the, the bows that are down below. Now I'm assuming that they're gonna be solid areas. There might be some white areas that would show through this. Maybe there are some gaps in there. I decided to just ignore that fact that, that that's possible. And made my shadow colors are, the R37 went in first and this is the R89. R89 is one of my favorite dark colors to use with reds. And I wanna show you something in how you can make this pop even more than it is popping now in the final step. So stay tuned for that. And I'm gonna just kind of color most of this in with the R89, not really leaving a whole lot of that R37 after all, because I really wanted some nice contrast for these. And that requires having plenty of color in there. Next up is to put a little bit of that R89 into the portions that are up on top. But I'm leaving as best I can, because it's sometimes hard in these little stamps, I'm trying to leave some bounce light on the opposite side. So if the shadow side is on the left, I'm trying to leave that absolute far left for the bounced light. The bounce light is going to be the R37. It's not going to be this R14 that's showing but putting the, the R89 a little bit further away helps me to remember to do that portion because it's real easy to forget, especially when you're doing all of these at once, all these different little pieces. You could also just do each triangle one by one and then just get into a rhythm. I figured it would be faster to do it this way, so I just proceeded. But you can see I'm taking that R37 and covering over those areas on the left-hand side where that bounce light is. Because bounce light is not a highlight in the same way that on a shiny bow like this that you're going to get a really, really bright highlight. It's just a, a highlight within a shadow. So it's really not, not something that I would call a highlight. 
in that kind of a way. So you want to dull it down, push it back a little bit so you still get that roundness, but you also catch a little bit of the light coming from the other direction. And hopefully if you have taken my new class all about shading, hint, hint, uh, you might have learned a little bit about that as well because there's some content on bounce light in that class. So moving along here, trying to just get some of the blending going with that R37 color, knowing that I'm going to use two more reds in this. Because you can see in the list, there is a R14 and an R17. The R17 is a little stronger in color. So I'm using that R17 to shave down the highlights a little bit further. And the R17 has more pigment in it, I guess. I'm not really sure how to describe that, but it's more red than the R14 is. The R14 is a really weak color. And I want to add more of that R14, but I want, I want to have enough of this R17 so this feels really, really red. And now the R14 is shaving down those highlights even more. And you could even get rid of some of them entirely if you wanted to. You, didn't ha you don't have to have the white highlights. You could have pinkish highlights and maybe even go for a lighter pink color than this. But you can see how that just starts to condense that highlight down to a smaller area. Now here's the magic part. The R89 is a pretty deep color. But look what happens when you add a really, really dark to it. There is no darker R. There's no darker red than an R89. That's as dark as it gets. So you have to go for something else, either a complement or a gray. And so I went for a gray and then went back in with the R89 just to make sure that that didn't feel like a blackish color in there and added it in the shadow areas. The shadow areas are generally toward the light side, the, the side the highlight is coming from. Usually that's the place to put the shadows because the light is kind of coming into the interior of the bow and hitting the opposite side. It's, it's kind of a backwards thinking thing, but it's very complex and very difficult to explain, but there you go. The other bow that I'm coloring, I won't talk through that one again, the same colors. I'm going to use the same sequence, the same everything. So you can see it on a rounded bow instead of the one with the triangles and the points on it. And I thought I'd tell you about my sabbatical coming up because every December I take the month off because you guys are busy doing family stuff and parties and decorating and everything. Nobody's watching YouTube. So I give myself the month off because the onslaught of holiday projects coming up to this time of year is exhausting. I feel like I've been on a treadmill of crafting and stuff and new releases coming out seemingly every week. They seem to just come faster and faster. But I am going to be taking the month off, so I won't be here on YouTube. There's a possibility one thing might happen. And if it does, make sure you have your notifications turned on. That would be clicking the bell down beside the subscribe button. And you can tell it to send you all videos. Don't sell it, tell it to send you personalized because then they will decide which they send you. But if you say notify me of all, then you will get all. But anyway, I will be back in January, so rest assured. And I will be on social media plenty, doing lots of teaching on there as well. I'm going to keep that stuff up. But I am going to take a YouTube break. And I have so many things on my list to do. It's insane. And other things just got piled onto it. You know, the sketch marker stuff that just happened that I posted about recently? Yeah, they're here. So I'm like, I'm, I'm tempted. I really want to run to that project. I have so many other big priorities for the business that I need to get to. And I've been putting them off for a year. <laughs> so I need to get to those things. And it's driving me bananas. Lots of website stuff. Lots of planning for the new year. There's going to be some changes coming in the new year. Um, it's going to be good stuff. You're going to love it. And I just need to get on getting that stuff ready for 2022. And I'm thrilled to do it. 
but goodness, I am, I'm going to be just as much an insomniac during my sabbatical as I've been during the regular part of the year. If I thought this part was crazy, that's going to be nuts. The only thing that I'm going to have over there is not having a lot of deadlines. And, and that's a good thing. So at least I, I don't have, I have a, a target for a number of those items that I'm bringing in in 2022. I'm going to try to not set January 1st for the due date for everything because that could be really scary trying to get everything done at once. It might be a piecemeal release. I don't know. We shall see. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas season and get lots of art done during that time as well. My classes are still on sale all month long. And you can also ask Santa Claus to get you a gift card to my site. If there's classes that you want to get and you're not ready to choose one or you're thinking there might be something fun coming next year, because, hmm, there might be something fun coming next year, (laughs) then you could ask Santa for a gift card that you could use sometime next year and be ready for anything. So that's always fun. Uh, Gift cards are also something that you can send to somebody else. Maybe I should explain how they work. If you buy the gift card and you put in the email address of the person who's going to get it, they will receive an email from the website at that time saying you just got a gift card. If you want to wrap it up for Christmas, then I would highly recommend putting your address in for both the recipient, the, the to and the from. And that way you get the email you can print out the code for them and wrap it up in a box and give it to them and explain to them what it is if they don't know about the site already, et cetera. And you can, you know, put some art supplies in the box so that they can take whatever class you're recommending for them. But if you want it to be a surprise, you need to send it to yourself so that they don't get it already. I don't have the capacity on the website, at least not at this point, to tell it to send on a particular day. So it sends it right then when you buy it. So just make sure you're aware of that if you're interested in getting any gift cards. And uh, yeah, so there's that. So these beautiful bows are are really gorgeous. I mean, I, I just loved how they came out. I loved when I added that really rich dark. It was as though they came alive. They had felt very flat. And, well, I guess you might not have thought they were flat until you saw the black. So I hope that that was a good surprise that showed you the power of contrast. Because I tell you that all the time, and nobody believes me. (laughs) Well, I shouldn't say nobody. There's a lot of people that just say, I use scary darks. And they're not so scary. They're not as frightening. Just try it. It's only paper. You can't go wrong with it because all that you would do is just toss it and start on a different one. Not a big deal. So there is bow number two. And for each one of these, I just put a strip of paper that was colored with the same colors across it and added a sentiment. Bada boom, bada bing. Talk about an easy card, right? Took a little while to make the coloring, but you saw this in real time. I got two of them done and we're only at 13 minutes. So there you go. It's not so hard. All right, I will see you in 2022, or I will see you like maybe this afternoon over on social media. All right, bye guys.